The March for Our Lives generating enormous media coverage as the left-wing media parades out these young, unthinking, unknowledgeable children for a losing cause and an immoral cause, an unjust cause. Also, Stormy Daniels continues to be in the headline, no surprise there. And have you seen the new poster boy, David Hogg? He's such a handsome, good little boy, and he would line you up in front of a firing squad, probably, if it would help to get guns out of your hands. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Welcome to today's program, friend. Everybody with a conscience hates unjust gun violence unjust gun violence. Everybody with a conscience hates unjust knife violence, unjust baseball bat violence, unjust ax, hammer, screwdriver violence. Anyone with a conscience hates unjust violence. Likewise, anyone with a conscience is thankful for just violence. The kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. There is a place for just violence, for holy violence. You understand that? The whole concept of just war. If you didn't believe in just violence, then you should just go ahead and be in England. Go renew your vow to king and country or to queen and country and, and become British because America is free because of violence. Just violence. The Civil War violence was a part, a key factor in the end of slavery. You can go down through history, the, 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 the destruction of the Nazi regime the end of the Third Reich, the end of the concentration camps was because of just violence. The Greeks winning their independence against the godless Muslims who had tortured and tormented them for almost 400 years, a seven year bloody war with guns. They were freed from Nazi or from, from Islamic tyranny because of just violence. The Armenian Christians suffered horrific bloody deaths, often at the barrel of a gun, because of unjust violence. And oh, by the way, and here's the point I want to bear in on. The Armenians were unarmed. They were disarmed. They, were, they actually had their arms taken away by law when they were in Turkey. So... But when I, when I watched clips and listened over the weekend and, and thought about it, the Oxford debate, the, the, it was actually called the Oxford Union Oath. The Oxford Oath. Have you heard of it? In 1933, between world wars, some wealthy, articulate, aristocratic young men at Oxford had a debate. And here was the resolution. This house would not in any circumstances fight for king and country. That was it. This house would not in any circumstances fight for king and country. Now, it made international news. Americans, uh, within two years, had a very similar oath. It was inspired by this oath, and it was signed by some 60,000 students in America. The American version said under no circumstance would they pick up arms. I, I don't have the exact wording, but it was the same thing. Wouldn't fight for country. Now at the time, the horror of World War I was still fresh. All right? And horrible experiences sometimes make bad law. Sometimes make bad principles. The horrors of World War I, the men without limbs, the men who were blind, I mean, just go down the list. Some of them were the fathers of these kids or grandfathers of these kids. And these kids were saying, we're not going to go to fight. We will not fight for king and country. 
And some of the very people who signed this did, just a few short years later, fight, and many of them died for king and country. So one of the little historical pieces I was glancing at said, so what are we to learn and glean from this, this exercise that they went through at Oxford in 1933? We can learn that they were stupid. They were ignorant. They were foolish. They were emotional. And that's what we can learn about these poor souls, these poor young people who have a just hatred, a just hatred for unjust gun violence. All right? Their hatred of it is just, but their solution is evil. It's stupid. It's ignorant. It's like the Oxford Oath. Some of these kids... One day, if they are either the victim of unjust gun violence or they're saved by just gun violence, they will be singing a different story. We come back, we'll take a look at the new poster boy who's just so cute. He's so adorable and he's so articulate and he's so, oh, I just want to say to him, be quiet, little boy, and shut up. I know that you think that you're really important right now, but you're not, and you're not smart. You're articulate, but you're stupid. I'm not trying to be unkind. I'm just telling you the truth. I'll be right back. Today, many so-called Christian intellectuals believe that the God of evolution used billions of years of death and destruction to evolve the bodies of the first human beings. Then, they simply declare the theory of evolution as fact to justify their unproven scientific fallacies. By the grace of God, more and more Catholics are rejecting this modern day mythology in favor of the traditional doctrine of creation as recorded by the Bible and believed and taught by all the fathers and doctors of the church. To find out how sound theology and natural science confirm the sacred history of Genesis, visit the Colby Center for the Study of Creation. And be sure to check out our bookstore, which has titles like I Have Spoken to You from Heaven, A Catholic Defense of Creation in Six Days, and A Catholic Assessment of Evolutionary Theory. That's the Colby Center for the Study of Creation. Please remember this. All right, look, look at me. I'm wearing a, wearing a leather sport coat, old t-shirt, trying to kind of look hip. Here I am. You have the right to choose what you do with your own body. No government official can or should tell you what is one of the most private decisions you could ever make between your God, your clergyman, if you have one, your conscience, and your doctor. It's up to you what you do. Now, that was all a lie, by the way, but I'm well-dressed. I was trying to be articulate. Some people think that I'm not all that unhandsome, say it like that. But the words that I said were wrong. There are people who are good looking, they are articulate, they are funny, some of them. Ellen DeGeneres is one of the most funny people that I've seen in a long time. She's hysterical, I saw her live. It was, she was hysterical. She's crazy, she's evil, she's, or she's an evil doer, she's immoral, she's a lost soul, but she's articulate. She has a good rhythm when she speaks. Watch footage of this poor young man. He, by the way, this, this young fella, God save his soul. You just watch him and you'll see what I'm talking about. First off, I'm going to start off by putting this price tag right here as a reminder for you guys to know how much Marco Rubio took for every student's life in Florida. One dollar and five cents. You can hear the people in power shaking. They've gotten used to being protective of their position, chewing safety, the safety of inaction. Inaction is no longer safe. And to that we say, no more. 96 people, 96 people die every day.
from guns in our country, yet most representatives have no public stance on guns. And to that, we say no more. We are going to make this the voting issue. We are going to make, take this to every election, to every state, and every city. We are going to make sure the best people get in our elections to run, not as politicians, but as Americans. Because this, this is not cutting it. When people try to suppress your vote, and there are people who stand against you because you are too young, we say no more. I say to those politicians that say change will not come, I say we will not stop until every man, every woman, every child, and every American can live without fear of gun violence. And to that I say no more. So there you go. He's got the cadence going on. No more. You can hear them shaking. I don't hear them shaking, David. I don't mean to, I don't mean to burst your bubble. Now, the, the point I want to stay on is that the fact that he is articulate as a 17 or 18 year old kid only means that he's articulate. The fact that he's self-confident in front of a camera only means that he's self-confident in front of a camera. You can look throughout history, especially since the dawn of film, shall we say, at some of the most articulate, charismatic despots that the world has ever known. Great in front of a camera. Inspirational to those who want to be deceived or who are deceived for whatever reason. So here's this young man being paraded around. And, and there are people who, with a brain who are eating his lunch, all right? He's getting thrashed, as he should be. The fact that he's full of himself, the fact that he's immature, the fact that he's really not intelligent, he's just articulate, those things are kind of an aside, okay? The issue is that he's wrong. But we live in a culture where Franklin Delano Roosevelt could never have been elected president because he had polio and he was in a wheelchair. President Reagan was great in front of the camera, as was Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. And tragically, we still haven't figured out as a body politic that somebody who is good looking and articulate does not, that when, when someone is good looking and articulate does not necessarily mean that they're intelligent. <laughs> Just go to Hollywood. Just go to Hollywood and you can prove my point. I'll be right back. Don't go away. I want to talk to you. By the way, next segment, the just parents. Get the little kids out of the room, okay? Have Muslim terrorists hijacked the peaceful religion of Islam? Or is there more to the story? The answer lies in the life of one man, Muhammad, the founder of Islam. Muslim terrorists see themselves inside a 1400 year old story, a narrative that focuses on specific events in the life of Muhammad. We are going to look at Muhammad's life using their most sacred literature. We will look at Muhammad at the Battle of Badr. We'll see him deal with those who mock him. We'll see the times when he used deception. We'll witness Muhammad's anti-Semitism. And yes, we will discuss Muhammad and his teachings concerning sex, slavery, and jihad. Friend, if you want to understand Islamic terrorism, get this series today. Before we talk about Stormy Daniels, and again, this is a, an adult segment that you want to have no kids in the room. Uh, one of our team pointed out, hey, did you see the platform? Did you see the buses? This cost hundreds of thousands. Really and truly, you'd have gone into the millions of dollars. Who paid for what these kids at the March for Our Lives did? I can tell you. Homosexual activist groups or leaders, pro-abortion groups or leaders, um, Democrat groups or leaders, 
Maybe we'll find some George Soros money there. Maybe there'll be, I'm guessing now, Black Lives Matter money. My, my point is, I'm a leader in a civil protest movement, okay? I know how this works. You have people who know how to do it, do it. These kids didn't know how to pull together an event like this. This was orchestrated by adults who are seasoned activists and who have deep pockets, okay? Make no bones about it. This was about headlines. Now, if you're, if you're not familiar with the activist world and how it works, you might look at it and go, wow, that was really amazing. This was so spontaneous. This was a field trip funded by left-wing, God-hating, freedom-hating, primarily pro-abortion, pro-homosexual marriage activists. I say primarily. Go down the line. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, let's talk about this, this poor, no, this evil, worn-out hag, this whore named Stormy Daniels. I don't remember what her real name is. That's what her, her pornographic name is. So let's assume the worst, just for a moment. Let's assume the worst. Let's assume that President Trump had an affair with her while he was married to Melania, okay? Let's just assume that. That is wrong. It is sinful. It's a horrible sin. It's the sin that leads unto death. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the president knows that it was wrong. Sneaking suspicion. Not just because he evidently has been outed in this, but because human beings have a conscience. How, you know, how much our conscience talks to us or is buried beneath a pile of whatever is another discussion. So that's, that's a given, all right? Just like it's a given that what David did with Bathsheba was evil and what he did to Uriah the Hittite was evil. Just like it's a given that what Peter did by denying Jesus with cursings and with an oath was an evil behavior, okay? Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the angels and my Father in heaven. So Peter committed the one thing that Jesus said, you're gonna be in big trouble eternally if you do this. So having established without any debate that if in fact, assuming the worst, that President Trump was involved in an illicit, immoral, adulterous affair with this woman. There it is. And so now what? Now you have the New York Times, other major publications lining up 60 minutes doing an interview with a woman who is a harlot. Please, please. I, when I read portions of the New York Times story, I could not believe my, I couldn't believe what I was reading. Like trying to reconstruct this woman. We're talking about, in the scriptures, there are three things that you cannot put into the treasury, in money. There are three sources of money that you cannot put into the treasury, the, the God's treasury. The price of a dog, the price of blood, when Judas betrayed Christ and he tried to bring the money back, they wouldn't take it because it was the price of blood, and the price of a harlot, the price of a whore, okay? It's so repugnant. The money itself being made from harlotry is so repugnant that God says, I don't even want the money brought into the temple, okay? And you've got the New York Times and other outlets that are lining up behind her giving her this airtime, it's not, it's because she is trying to hurt the president. That's all this is about, people. It's only about destroying President Trump. And so you've got the New York Times marching off to war, being led by an old, worn-out whore. That rhymes. I'm, I think I might, I might feel a song coming on. I might have to I might have to write a spoof song about them following an old worn out whore. I'll get back to you on that. Don't go away. What Would Mohammed Do? Islamic Terrorism Explained is the best movie series documentary ever produced on the life of Mohammed and Islam. How do I know? 
because it's what critics are saying. John Moore, radio host and author, said, I learned more from what would Muhammad do about Islam and Islamic terrorism than I've learned from everything I ever read and watched in my entire life. Best-selling author Dr. Bill Warner said, what would Muhammad do is the best movie series, TV production on the life of Muhammad and Islamic terrorism that has ever been produced. Friends, this is what the experts are saying. No one has ever done what we've done. I encourage you to get one, two, four copies. Call 304-289-3700. That's 304-289-3700. Or order it at the address or the website that you see on the screen. Friend, we have a series that will help you and those you love to have an impact on this country. It's called Insurrecta Nex. That's Latin for revolution against the killing of innocent people. This is the history, the philosophy, and the theology of social revolution in America. We look at the Stamp Act, the Boston Tea Party, the abolition of slavery, the abolition of child labor, women's voting rights, the civil rights movement. All of them have this in common, courage sacrifice, dedication, and in-your-face tactics and rhetoric. That's one of the reasons that we've been losing the culture wars the last 40 years is because the bad guys are using these tactics and we aren't. We will send you this 14-part TV series along with these manuals for students, a teacher's facilitator guide for only $40. Go to 304-289-3700, 304-289-3700. The Bible says that a harlot can be purchased for a loaf of bread. It doesn't mean that you buy the person, it means that you buy the evil act. It's a business transaction that is immoral, okay? so. The harlot's in it for the money, and the man is in it for the experience. President Trump evidently paid this woman, and perhaps Playboy model that is now coming forward saying she wants out of her non-disclosure agreement from years ago, and he's paid them. So this was some type of business transaction like the verse says. A harlot can be bought for a loaf of bread, or maybe 10 loaves of bread, whatever it is. Stormy Daniels is, according to Wikipedia at least, a millionaire because she runs a pornographic business, a business selling pornography. Now, this is somebody who traffics in human flesh and souls, all right? The danger of pornography is so well documented now. The evil of pornography is clear the danger, the, Im the immorality of it at, at every level. And she traffics in that. Never, you know, there's, so there's that. And then there's the way that the, 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 um, the Mies report under President Reagan, D uh, Dr. Dobson was on that panel, delved into the abuses of the women, the actresses. So, it's an, it's an underworld, immoral, ungodly, unscrupulous, demonic world akin to the drug lord world. This is what she's involved in. This is the type of a person that she is, okay? And you have the New York Times and other 60 Minutes just lining up behind her to try and take down the president. There was a day, there was an hour, when the media would have turned away just out of a sense of duty and shame. We're dealing with a millionaire whore. That's what we're dealing with, a millionaire whore who sees money. This is all about money. Because if she can get out of her non-disclosure agreement, she can make millions from this because that's what this is about. You can buy a whore for a loaf of bread. She stands to make millions of dollars because of her name recognition in the pornographic industry because of what she's doing now. That's what this is about, people. They're using it to bring down Trump. She's using it to get 
money. This is diabolical. Talk to you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.